This place is called Wangen. It's in southern Germany. It's only 20 kilometers or so to Lindau, Lake Constance, the border with Austria. It's quite an amazing town and I know that very few people have actually heard of it and it's hard to understand why because it's got a late medieval early modern heart to it I would say what 16th century in the main despite the fact as I always say that a medieval town or an old town is only as old as the last fire and this town had several serious fires in former days nonetheless a great deal has survived as we shall now see now as often I start off with the motorhome parking this is the municipal air in Wangen and if you want to leave your van there it's just over 10 euros per day but you can see all that in another film the air itself is next to the river Upper Argen which is down there and the town of Wangen is to the north side largely I would say of the Argen so I'm walking now in a northerly direction northeast really north northeast really so The Argen is a comparatively short river, it's only about 80 kilometers in length, and there's two parts to it, the upper Argen and the lower Argen. But despite that, it is the third largest contributing river to Lake Constance. Here in Wangen, it has been known to overflow and it has flooded the lower town on at least two occasions in the last 20 years alone. The route that it takes is quite interesting and to the east of here there's a place called Eistabel where it goes through a gorge. Uh, now I tried to get to the gorge a month ago. I was warned at the tourist office I didn't have the correct footwear for it but all the it looked fantastic with the water falls frozen you can get behind the waterfalls and walk up them but they were right in the tourist office i didn't have the correct foot, foot, footwear and i got around 10 meters and then decided this wasn't for me i was going to hurt myself trying to get down there here there's a waterfall at times but today the water's been blocked so it's not flowing as a waterfall. The history of Wangen goes back to the year 815 when it's first mentioned in documents and it's closely linked to the monastery of St. Gallen which is now in Switzerland as are many places in this area. This is the end of February as you can possibly tell from the vegetation but it's a very fortunate time to be here because this is during a festival called Fastnet, or Fastnacht. It changes in various countries. And it's, a, it's a festival which is celebrated in Vorarlberg in eastern Austria, western Austria, in southern parts of Germany and in Switzerland, Liechtenstein. And this is related to the end of the winter and the coming of Lent. The carnival is a time when you celebrate um, celebrate the end of winter. The, the farmers are glad that uh, it, it's going to be there's going to be sun and plant their, plant their crops. At the same time, as having winter over and having stuffing yourself before Lent, when you're supposed to eat less. In any case, 
So it's all it's all linked to that now. I filmed part of the celebrations here, and as we walk around, we will no doubt see people in traditional fastnets costumes, and in particular the jesters, which you can hear their bells ringing from quite a long way off. In Vangen there are a number of sculptures and fountains and so we'll be having a look at them. This is the Saumarkt, the former pig market where once a week the pigs would be sold, some also pig products would be sold. And down here we have a statue or a group of statues, a monument if even I would say, to Saint Anthony who is the patron saint of domestic animals. And there we can see that he's got a number of pigs and it is believed in medieval, or was believed in medieval times that Saint Anthony could actually protect from the plague. I'm not certain exactly how that came about. Now apparently he lived in Egypt, I think it was the 4th century CE. This sculpture has been here since December 1986 and it took more than a year to complete. And this is the sound market. Pig market. This is called the corn house, so grain area. This is St. Martin's Church. Much of what we see today dates to, I would say, the 14th century, but uh, it's been renovated over many times. Indeed, the church has been here possibly as long as a thousand years. You can see here the remnants of the city walls from the 15th century but it was decided that the town was too too big to be for everyone to be living within the walls down here so in the 16th century it was expanded outwards in many places the city walls were actually destroyed later particularly in the 19th century because when they needed room for development, city walls got in the way. For example, in Newcastle upon Tyne, where I come from, part of the city wall was actually destroyed, medieval city wall was destroyed for the, so that a railway line can actually come in. This is a very curious sculpture and any translation I do is going to really end up in failure. This is meant to represent the repressed Algawas, that's people from this area. This sculpture has been here since 1997 and it represents people who consider themselves to be repressed and it doesn't matter if they're on the top or on the bottom. Now, um, the, they're all men, and when it was put up here, the, the mayor 
Jörg Liest, who incidentally appears to be represented by this character here with the mask. He said that as men are those that think they're repressed more than women, that's why there's just men here. Now there's various trades. So we've got the, got the priest, we've got a, a card player, that's a trade. And they've got somebody who appears to be sort of washing uh, equipment. Uh, is that a farmer? Don't know. That somebody puts lights out. We got, got the thing to do. And there's also some slogans going around. And the thing is, it's more or less local dialect, and it's somewhat difficult for me to understand what's going on here. But uh, we have, for example. Uh, nothing said is crazy enough, I can understand that. And, and here. You see how intricate the, the statue is. One of the slogans there is it's not a sin to mow your neighbour's field as long as you don't rape it in. This is St. Martin's Gate, first mentioned in 1347. And it's been like this since 1608 in this state that we see it today. And there's still some remnants of the Gothic paintwork in the passageway. And the rooms inside have been restored, but that's not something we can see. But the paintwork on the outside is quite incredible. So it's, we have there, date of renovation from 1924. And this road is still used, despite only two and a half meters clearance. Martin Storplatz, and there's the gate from the other side. The square of Martin's Tower, Martin's Tower Square, some better. Once upon a time, the first city wall actually ended where this house is now, but the date of the 1892 it looks like. Then it was extended to take to where the bottom of the road is down here today and turning left. Not much can be seen of the former city wall was here, but in places you get the idea of where it was, particularly around the church. So here we have part of the inner wall, the original wall. There we have the wood ovens 
of the Fedilis Bakery. fountains of the town and let's have a look down here at the bathhouse which is that tall building we can see now in front of us this building is the bathhouse Bad Stuber and this has been here since 1589. Now, if you came here in those days, you'd get things like beard trimming, haircut done. Uh, you could also get some bloodlet as well, which was then the cure for everything. Now, this building has survived in its current state since then because it was used for other things, such as a hostel for the uh, homeless. And excavations have shown that the previous bathhouses once stood here. Indeed, the bathing equipment uh, dates from the beginning of the 15th century so it makes it 600 years old now and if we come down here to Bad Stuben Gasse we have this quite magnificent street which presumably is also from the end of the 16th century this house here similar for example to Elizabethan buildings in the United Kingdom and turn up here as well to see the, the way the roof is with modern guttering of course now let's come out here to the moat and outside we've got a fountain And there we can see an enactment of what used to happen inside the building. There's a lot of credit, of course, to the inhabitants of Angen that they thought of having a bath. Apparently, Queen Elizabeth I, who was then on the throne of England, had a bath once a month and she was considered to be really clean. This is the powder tower. It's also called the water tower, the dais tower. It dates to the early 15th century and it was part of the scheme to build a wall around the tower. So but this has been completely rebuilt. 1596. You can do a lot of work there in 1596. It's a picture of it from 1611 which shows dried cloth from the nearby dye works being hung on out, hung out in it and on the town wall. So that was restored in 1985. The buildings in front are today part of a rather large museum, fortunately only open from April until October and as it's now February I'm not going to be able to see it. Now below the building there is a mill which for some reason is called the Donkey Mill, which I don't know, and that wasn't originally here, that was actually acquired in 1989 and placed there. It's probably a bit of a good view of the city wall and the powder tower. Now turning around here, we've got what was once the brewery for the town. Now we have the newspaper, the Schwäbische Zeitung. And, uh, I mentioned the war criminal, Julius Weil, who well, he died in 2002. In fact, it will be the 15th anniversary of his death on 28th of February, so he so is 24th. So it will be this week. Now, a vial killed seven people at the end of World War II. 
and interrogation staff from the little quarter. So his lawyers claimed that he was in Vienna at the time, so he couldn't have done it. So that's what they claimed for the trial. The trial, of, he didn't actually serve very long because he died quite soon after. But he actually worked for Schwerischer Zeitung and he died here in uh, Wangen. And uh, on his 65th birthday, he actually got the a federal award for voluntary work which he did for hiking. This shows a total difference from what people did in their youth as war criminals to how they can actually later become useful people. But it didn't help him, he did he, at the end he got caught. There's even film of him in the process of being caught and he's actually, he says uh, on film something to the effect of oh, they tried before to get me and they failed and they'll fail again but they didn't fail again, they got him eventually. Here we have the town library. And next to the library is this statue, which has been here since 1990. It's called The Seeker of Truth. And it's got a stack of books there, the bottom of which is from Wangen. But he's got lots of other stuff there from universal literature, such as Socrates, Wilhelm von Holbolt, Plato, Dante Alighieri, Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, Sappho. And so there's works there of Arabic literature, we've got the Bible, got Jewish literature, and the objective is to, I think, to go through as much as possible and then come to the right conclusions. The building where the gas house now stands dates back to 1618, so it'll have its 400th anniversary next year, and in front of it we have a statue which recollects one of Aesop's fables, which is the following. So it's a father and a son going to market, and they meet three people, and they say to them, why are you going to market with that donkey when you could ride on it instead of walking? So the father gets on top of it, and these two here say to him, why are you allowing your son to walk? You'll get tired. So the son gets on, and then these two people rebuke the son for saying, why are you letting your elderly father walk on it? And so they both get on the donkey, and then a group of people says to them, that's terrible, you can't overburden that poor animal like that. So the solution they come up with is this, is that they carry the donkey. To the side of the hospital church we have this rather unusual fountain design, shall we say. The dove and the sparrows, so it's called the sparrows fountain. There's the dove, which is a bit more aloof, a bit more saintly, representing something perhaps a bit more holy, looking down on seven sparrows, four of which are sitting around the fountain, and three of which are fighting over horse droppings in the street. Above the house we can see in front of us right now, there's a painting on the wall, a mural, and the house dates to the 18th century. And it was a house, I think, which was used by people from the church, which is to my left. There we have a date. 1580, although I think the church is later than that. There was a medieval church that stood on this site earlier.
tourist office. Well, it says there, it's the hospital department of the Holy Ghost. In Wangen, there are a number of these cast iron fountains, and they were built between 1861 and 1889. And I suspect that was just before piped water was actually delivered here. You know, running water was something which many homes had by the beginning of the 20th century in this part of Germany. My own experience with running water has been this, is that I've been to places uh, in eastern Poland where there was no running water in houses in the countryside and you had to get the water from the well. Rather difficult in winter. And particularly when the toilets are also outside. Very difficult in winter. Now these fountains were actually moved so sometimes they're put somewhere else. Uh, this, it's got a date of 1861 but this is a sort of a typical location really for a fountain which served people because it would be put in the courtyard rather than in the street so that was useful for the, the people who actually lived here. In some communities in many countries a fountain could replace this for their uh, use only within the people who lived in this area. Of course this was a hospital church so it could have been for the use of the hospital. But you know these fountains as I said were actually moved here at a later date. And there's another fountain. This one has a date of 1882.